I want to roll a little further with this example and demonstrate the stack. We've had a couple videos on the heap and we've seen how the heap works. And The main difference between the stack and the heap is that the stack is a LIFO structure as I've explained in videos prior to this. Let me get my stack and my heap right here. And we saw in previous videos that when new comes out here to place objects it tries to organize them, compacts them, but in no way are we required to keep these objects out here. We can free them up and the garbage collector can take them away as necessary. But when it does that it also compacts the objects back together like so, which we saw in the previous video. So then these two objects would come down next to this one or maybe rearrange however. Again, there's lots of reading on garbage collection if you want to Google around and find that. Now a stack though is strictly a LIFO structure last in first out meaning we put things on the stack and if you want to take things off the stack that's fine but you have to take them off in the exact same order or reverse order actually the same reversed order as you push them on that's why it's last in first out currently out of these two this guy was the last guy in so he will be the first out now if you really want to learn stacks at a low level I have some great videos about stacks in the assembly programming playlist if you want to learn assembly and get down with the bits and bytes. We'll do a little bit of that in these videos here but not as hardcore as I do in those assembly videos. I want to give you more context of what's going on from the C-sharp programmers perspective and let you just kinda of peek under the hood a little bit and get a feel for that. The way we put things on the stack is we need to make them value types. We've seen that in several previous videos and so the way I make my counting class a value type as I say struct here and then let me just for good measure I'll say var c3 right here and var c4 why is that important well the reason why it's important is remember with value types I don't really have an object unless I do this alright this new doesn't go out to the heap it doesn't create an object out in memory we've seen in previous videos that the new simply zero out, zeroes out the variable that you're um, trying to create. All right. Having said that though I could leave these off it's just kind of a no-op at that point though it doesn't really do anything effective. Let me build this and we'll see hey um we got an error here. Structs cannot contain explicit parameterless constructors and hopefully that makes sense after the value type videos but this is one reason why people don't like using structs this is one of the things that bites you. You say, oh, I, can't, I can't define my own parameterless constructor. Well, no, because if if you're making a struct, the idea is it's a very primitive thing and it should act as all primitives like doubles and floats and those things. And the default value for that is the zero everything else. So, no, we cannot implement our own parameterless constructor. So, let's hack it just by adding an argument here and I'm just going to alt drag down here and type one and we'll just pass one in here we're not using it anywhere in here I'm just simply trying to make this compile control shift B build succeeded now I want to show you that these values actually take room on the stack and I'm going to switch the project here to release the reason why is in debug mode um, the debug code actually uses a lot of the stack and allocates memory and if you if I encourage you to take this example I'm about to do and do it in debug mode and you'll see that the debug code will actually uh, allocate a lot of room on the stack for various debugging things which I don't want for this video I want to see everything nice and compact now if everything I say is true we should see C1 on the stack then C2 then C3 C4 C5 very similar to what we saw on the heap except with the heap I could say GC collect and they would go away Alright, so let's just try this. F11, uh, we have this meaningless GC collect there. Let me, oh, I got a lot of windows open here. Let's keep memory here for a minute. I'm going to say GC collect. That'll have no effect because these objects are on the stack. How do I get the address of the actual stack? Control DR, bring up the registers. We have the stack pointer and we have the base pointer. I could go into the difference between these, but essentially the base pointer is a copy of the stack pointer and allows us to address into the stack. Blah, blah, blah. Go watch the assembly videos if you want to. I'm going to copy the value inside the base pointer. 0x, control V, 
oh, I should say zero, not oh, zero x control v, enter, and look at this. This is the stack. Doesn't it look a lot like the heap? Yeah, there. There's really, there's no difference memory-wise or bit-wise between the stack and the heap. It's just how do we treat the memory. The heap, you can allocate all you want into it and remove and that sort of thing. Whereas the stack, you have to push and pop onto it. So let's uh, let's run this code here. The reason why I scrolled up there, in fact, I want to just, where's BP right here? So B, BB4, see how this address right here is this address right here? I'm going to kind of bring that down towards the bottom and just mark it. This will be the bottom of our stack and stacks grow downward. All right, I know that looks like I'm drawing an arrow upwards but really it's downwards. If you look at these addresses B0, AC, A8, A4, AC, A0, 9C, 9A. These addresses are counting down. All right, if you think of this like a book, if you were reading a book you would expect to read these stuff at the beginning at the top and then read your way down like so and so you can see that the addresses increase as we go downwards All right, but our stack actually grows downwards in memory but it's actually quite nice because then visually in this debugging window we can see the stack uh, visually it grows upwards which is nice because I've drawn our stacks growing upwards in all the videos prior to this let's create our counting class remember this one we should see an A somewhere, and we should see the ID of zero. So let me just F10 on this. Do you see an A anywhere in here, even though it's not highlighted red? This looks like an A right there. All right, let's, let's do the next one. This should be a B. Hey, look, there's a B, and here's our ID of zero, one, and here's our B right there. You can see the ASCII representation there, or Unicode. I guess we're Unicode. It's two bytes. All right, F10. Again, here's C, D, and E. So look at that. They grew on our stack much like they grew when I would draw them, right? Here's our stack, and here's our heap, and you know, here's C1, C2, C3, and nothing is on the heap. The heap is empty as far as these objects are concerned. Remember, we saw these objects created on the heap in previous videos. But in this video, we're seeing the objects directly on the stack. And I told you, value types are stored as is. They are the object. That is the object, and it is on the stack. Now, I can GC collect all I want right there in main right here. I can do GC collect all I want. But it will have no effect on the stack because the stack is immune to garbage collection. Garbage collection only applies to the heap. So I'll just F10 over this, and you'll see nothing over here changes. Yes, this changed up here, but that's because the GC collect ran and it modified some of the data up here. No big deal. All right, that's just part of going into the collect function and the collect further, you know, it probably has several variables it used and modified them and so it it changed this part of the stack. But our 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 do you like that accent there? I'm not, maybe that's a Utah accent. Our part of the stack is still alive and healthy and our objects are still there. You know, further here I could say C1, C2, and C3. And, and you saw in previous videos that I had to assign null to get the garbage collector to actually do its job. But remember, with value types, let me zoom in here a little bit. If I say C4 gets null, well, what does that mean? I'm trying to assign a reference value to an object. And the compiler is going to complain and say, um, uh, null doesn't convert to a counting class because it is a non-nullable value type. Right, uh, and you could go watch the noble videos if you wanted to to see how to make that kind of work, but it's not the same thing. So, anyway, that is a basic rundown of the stack. In the next video, I'm actually going to make a recursive function. You know, there's a scary word if you're a brand new programmer. Oh, recursion! You know, I, ah, don't let it scare you. I'm going to make a recursive function and show you how you can instantiate a function. Go tell that to your coworkers or to your classmates that you instantiate a function. But yes, we actually do instantiate functions, and we're going to see the stack actually do some hardcore work and see the LIFO structure of the stack come to life. All right? Maybe life. You know, it's kind of like LIFO, but it's life. Okay, I'm wasting your time.